Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. Vienna packs a punch. It's not subtle, but it is surprising. We share our best tips so you can get the most out of everything it has to offer. Vienna really isn't a budget city, but you can save some money here and there, and we'll talk about that more in a bit. We were here for nearly a month, but we're sharing our must-do things even if you're here for only a few days, including a few of our favorite foods. And we'll share prices at the end. We saved a bit of money by booking outside the city center, but if I had it to do over again, I'm not sure that I would. Although we might not have been able to visit at all because we could have been priced out of staying in Vienna, period. But we did miss the grandeur of looking out at the city right on our doorstep, so it was a hard trade-off. The city center is in District 1 and we stayed in District 3 and we were only about seven minutes to the subway station and but it was a very normal part of town. It could have been anywhere. Uh, so it didn't feel quite as special as the grandeur that is in District 1. And we didn't have a coffee shop on every corner like they say is Vienna coffee culture. So maybe we missed a little bit of that too. We did save a little bit of money because some of the food outside of the city center was a little bit cheaper. That's true. And getting around Vienna is great because the subway system covers a lot of the important parts of the city. There are no subway gates, you're not checked when you go on, you don't have to pass a ticket through anything. But we did use an app to make sure that we were buying tickets because you can get tagged if you're not carrying a ticket or you don't have the app that shows you've bought a ticket. So it's important to make sure you always do that. And we'll put a link to that app in the description below. Maybe because we weren't in the city center, it took a little bit longer to feel connected to the city because it just felt very um, average. But when we were in the city center, it just came alive and its beauty is everywhere. Yeah, we missed the stunningness of just walking outside and going, <laughs> yeah, I would say that Vienna is a very flashy city, so uh, you don't want to miss that if you can help it. We arrived in Vienna via train from Krakow, and it was a little bit of a money saver right there. And it wasn't a bad ride. It was actually better than some of our previous rides from the Glacier Express to get to Krakow. If you've missed the Glacier Express episode, we'll link it below. So that is one of the cool things. There's a ton of trams and all different kinds of transportation, which makes this a very easy city to come in and out of. It was easy to walk too. It wasn't like we had to take a tram everywhere. But it was really hot. We were here in mid-July and it was sticky and there's not really a lot of air conditioning in Airbnbs in general. No, you can see that they're set for heat, radiators everywhere, waiting for that cold weather. But the hot weather, no, we were with open windows and the stand fan that we kept moving around to get the most effective airflow on us. Most of the time, I was very, very comfortable at night, even though we had to move it around. But it did rain, so bring an umbrella. In fact, some of our video from one of our tours was in the rain most of the time. Yeah, of course, the walking tour, we had to carry umbrellas. But he was very impressed we brought them. It's like, good on you for bringing your umbrellas out. We've made this mistake before. <laughs> one big tip, make sure you stop at an ATM and get some cash when you get to Vienna because surprisingly there's a lot of restaurants and small shops that may not accept credit cards and they don't always advertise that. We sat down at one place and then when I tried to pay at the end, I heard someone else try to offer a credit card and they said, oh no, we're old fashioned, we just take cash. So have cash with you. Yeah, we actually had a couple of places. Yeah. So you do wanna be prepared. And it's Euros here and the main language is German, but plenty of people also speak English. And we also found many places that had also a German menu and an English menu. Yeah, no problem getting around or speaking to anybody. Our top recommendation for things to do while you're in Vienna is to just walk and explore. And this is a little bit surprising, I think, coming from me, because I'm the person who feels like I need to go into every museum and every site that there is. But I actually felt like there was so much beauty around us that I was content just walking and exploring and didn't really even feel the need to go into a lot of places. I could just enjoy the exterior beauty. Yeah, just taking the subway stations, getting off at Stefan Splatz, and just looking around because the cathedral there is just drop-dead gorgeous. And so are some of the other buildings. You, you walk up to a 
a city hall and you're like, oh, this is a gorgeous building. What is it? Oh, it's their city hall, you know? You don't have to do a lot to be amazed at what Vienna looks like. Be sure in your walkabout that you include the Ringstrasse. It is a ring around the city and it replaced the fortified walls that had come down at the request of Emperor Franz Joseph. So what's here? Well, we got the state opera, parliament. Which is gorgeous. <laughs> City Hall. Yeah, City Hall looks like a church. It's a statement building. And what else do we have? The Museum of Fine Arts and the Natural History Museum. Along with palaces, private residences. The University of Vienna is here, which was built in 1365. It's the oldest university in modern German-speaking world and well worth you strolling around. There's no expense to go in there and just wander. There's also Hofburg Imperial Palace and the CC Museum. They'll make your jaw drop. You don't need to go inside to be impressed by the grandeur, but of course you can tour them both. But I will warn you that the full tours are very long and you probably don't need to see everything. We didn't go out on the subway system to get to the Schönbrunn Palace, but it's one of Austria's top places to visit and you can spend an entire day exploring its private rooms and gardens. But seriously, it's cool enough just to explore from the outside, and its main palace park is free. It's the imperial residence of the Habsburgs in Vienna. And again, it's just a subway ride out there, but it takes maybe 10, 15 minutes more than the city center. Let's move on to music in Vienna. Vienna is the capital of classical music. Mozart played at Schönbrunn Palace when he was only six years old and composed some of his greatest masterpieces here. Mozart is loved in this city and you'll see a lot of references to him and it's for good reason. I mean, the music's wonderful. You heard it on our intro. There are statues in Stad Park of Johann Strauss II and Franz Schubert and you can visit the past residences of Mozart, Beethoven and more. That's the benefit of walking through the city and exploring it. There's so many little secret passages and ins and outs. Despite the pouring rain when we took our tour, we highly recommend the Airbnb experience tour we called Alleyways, Courtyards, and Hidden Sites. We'll put a link in the comments below. There were so many tucked away areas that you'd never know existed if you were just to explore on your own. This does not give you the stories about the major sites, but that's okay. That's a separate tour if you want to take it. We loved the Mozart and Strauss concert at the large Musikverein. Also called the Golden Hall. <laughs> Here all the musicians and singers were dressed in historical costumes and they came out in multiple versions of those and did different kinds of music. It was just an extra dimension to the concert itself, which was wonderful on its own just by the music. So if you're somebody who maybe is a little bit worried that you'll be bored by classical music, there's enough visual sights and beauty to entertain you. And in this particular one, a lot of the music was familiar to us. Yeah, and it's beautiful just to be in there. So it's well worth your time. It's not that long of a concert. We might recommend that if you can afford them, some of the box seats are on a higher level than everything else, which is all flat. Yeah, so no, no theater seating on the floor. So that was a little weird especially for someone who's not exactly the tallest person. <laughs> it's all good. I still was able to see, but I think that the elevated seats- uh, Might have been worth it. Boxes will yeah. be, yes. We were here in the summer, which is the off season for the Vienna Boys Choir. But if you visit at some other time, it would be great to catch one of the performances, including on Sundays at the Holy Mass at the Hofburg Chapel. Vienna isn't short of any green spaces or parks, and some of them are truly stunning, like the Volksgarten, which we got to walk through. As Napoleon was leaving the area, his troops blew up some of the fortifications, and it ended up leaving an extensive amount of open space, perfect for what is now known as the People's Garden. A thesis temple is there, it's a smaller version of the one in Athens, and there's even a small CC memorial for Empress Elizabeth. Johann Strauss I named a piece of music after this location called Volksgarden Quadrillo. Also, you don't want to miss Stad Park either. As we mentioned earlier, there's a golden statue here of Johann Strauss II. He was the Elvis of the time. That's why this statue even looks flashy. Also, Stad Park is a short walk from the city center and Steffensplatz. There are tons of benches here and it's very close to the Musikverein. Although this park looks like a bicycle stream, you're not allowed to bike through it. There are also beer gardens in Stadt Park, which is a very cool vibe. Vienna has so many museums that you can explore. There's a whole museum district part of town. 
And there was advertising everywhere for a Monet Picasso exhibit. And so we went to the Albertino Museum specifically to see that. That exhibit was great. And we also caught works by Renoir, Gauguin, and more. Just be mindful that there's another museum called Albertino Modern. And that's not where we went. We almost made a mistake going there. But the Modern does have an Andy Warhol permanent exhibit if you want to make the time for it. Let's also talk about street art. We took a bike tour around the city, which I highly recommend, and we'll link to it below. As part of the tour, we rode alongside the Danube River. One of the cool things here is that the area is part of the Vienna Wall Project, where certain walls in the city are available for anyone to use them artistically. And this area is the center of all of that. The city has an attitude that people will always be doing street art, so let's provide a space for it. When it's full, the city whitewashes some of it so its space can be reused. So we're curious, have you been to Vienna? What are your favorite things to do here? Let us know in the comments below. There's so much we can talk about when it comes to food, but can we just have a moment for the candy Pez, which was invented in Vienna in the 1920s and named after the German word for peppermint, Pfeffermints. This is shocking to me. I never knew that Pez was over here in Vienna. I thought this was an American thing. It was originally marketed as a breath mint and alternative to smoking cigarettes. So something learned. And before we talk about the rest of the food culture, we're excited to share that we've started our own absolutely free community forum that we are calling La Familia. You can ask questions about trip planning and all things related to travel there. We're also giving you a chance to peek behind the scenes and are offering a bunch of other perks we're calling gelato levels if you decide you want to help support us financially as well. A video with the details is linked in the description below. Vienna has a huge coffee culture scene, so I'm going to hand that part over to our coffee connoisseur. One of the most popular places for coffee culture is Cafe Central. It's very hard to get in, so we came really early before they opened and stood in line, which helped a lot. We didn't have to wait that long. I think we were only 20 minutes early. Unfortunately, the kitchen was undergoing renovations, so we could only have their desserts. I had the apple strudel, which was good, but not as amazing as I thought it might be. Tasting moment. <laughs> Classic. See, sometimes you gotta get these candid shots. This can't always be prepared. That it didn't come with a knife, and the pastry is such that you really need one to cut it. Oh, mine's worse. I'm trying to cut this thing, and it keeps sliding around, falling over. So. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not stable. These aren't stable for cutting foods. They also gave us uh, little chocolates with our coffee. And I think a little sweet is always fun. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed that we weren't able to get what we came here for. But uh, it's being renovated, so we couldn't get the rent. Right. It's a specialty here. One of the other popular historic places that we went to was Cafe Museum, which was popularized by local artists but we didn't find that place on our own. Yeah, actually, one of the things we love about travel is we tend to bump into people that we know. And on a plane ride back from Amsterdam, we actually bumped into my friend Martin and his wife, Maria, and they said, wow, what are you doing here? I said, what are you doing here? Said, well, we live in Vienna. So. And we were coming back from a side trip since we were here for a month. I had a bucket list item of seeing some things in Amsterdam. So we went ahead and took a quick three day trip. We've got an episode next week. You're going to want to subscribe for if you aren't already. And uh, we ended up making plans to meet with them. Yeah, because why not? Let's learn from the locals, learn the best place to eat, drink and see. Maria taught me how to eat worstel. Look at that technique, Jude. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the cheese? And no, no, oh, so be careful. I see. Okay. <laughs> Very good. And I had their schnitzel. And afterwards, they gave us a walking tour of the Ringstrauss area. It was very cool to hear about all the history from locals. We enjoyed Cafe Museum enough that we went back on a separate occasion for some Eggs Benedict and more cappuccino. One of the advantages of eating outside the city center was that our breakfasts were a little bit cheaper. We found a great place that served cappuccinos and assortment of breakfast foods at Coffee and Friends. Unfortunately, they closed for at least a week or so, so we had to scramble to find an alternate place. But it's a small world. The waitress that was taking care of us 
recognized my accent. She said, where are you from? I said, San Francisco, but we grew up in Buffalo, New York. She said, well, I'm from Western New York. So mind blown, we, we go to Vienna and we find someone from our hometowns. Very cool. One of the Viennese types of coffees is called melange. It's half a cup of a mild brewed coffee with half a cup of cream or milk topped with milk foam. We didn't enjoy it as much as our standard cappuccino, but it was nice to try the local flair. Vienna is a very European city, and because of that, there's a lot of other food influences here. Very unconventional ones for the Viennese diet, but we enjoyed some of it anyway because we were there for a whole month. We had delicious Turkish food and incredible pizza, a whole bunch of things, and maybe partly because it's a university city as well, so there's a lot of people coming from all over the world to attend. One of the most famous desserts in Vienna is the soccer tort. And so we waited in a long line to get into Cafe Soccer in order to try the original. I thought it was good, but not great. In my opinion, it wasn't worth a wait, and our waiter actually forgot to bring it to us. So we had our drinks, and we had to kind of wave our waiter over and say, we had a soccer tour too. <laughs> the upside was we didn't have to pay for it. So the famous tort, eh? Hey? Yes. It's got apricot jam in the middle and a dollop of whipped cream, ganache, and unknowns to me before now, walnuts. <laughs> I'm sure they're minimal. Uh, I'll, I'll brave it. Come on, you try it though. <laughs> Rich, moist? Um, not too moist. <laughs> um, maybe not quite as dry as I thought it would be. Um, that ganache on top, and I don't know if it's ganache, um, but it's fairly sweet too. But it's tasty. It's good. We waited in you line only for need it. a little bit of it. <laughs> yeah, it's good because that's all we're getting. While walking around town, we were delighted to see right in front of City Hall was a film festival. We didn't participate in watching any of the films that ran in the evenings, but we did take a huge advantage of the booths selling every variety of Austrian food. And there are ethnic foods here too. But we were all about the local favorites. We went from booth to booth trying Austrian specialties. We sort of turned it into a three course menu. So Spätzle may be, I think, a German food. I'm assuming Aust Austria obviously has it as well. <laughs> And it was one of the things that my mother used to make for my father. Uh, so buttered noodles, basically, uh, yeah. homemade. Um, his mother taught my mother how to make them. So it's kind of cool to be having some here and they really are delicious. More family connections. And we got Kassenkroner pork sausage, which is studded with cheese inside and then smoked over applewood. Should real sausage as a local. You just use a napkin and you pick it up. You don't use your knife and fork. You dip it now. Technically, there should have been horseradish, but I'll take it this way. And lastly, we tried Kaiser Schwarman, which is a fluffy pancake torn into bite sized pieces, caramelized and served sprinkled with powdered sugar. We're on to the sweet course, uh, Wiener Kaiserschmann, <laughs> and this has uh, raisins in it, so I'm already interested. Kind of like a um, little bit of a pancake consistency. Yeah, well, that is exactly what it is. Um, in fact, this is what we were, what I was trying to get when we were at Cafe Central. Oh. After the tour of the hidden nooks and crannies of the city, we stopped at Gasthaus Zoom Holdenstrock. Note that they don't take credit cards. It's a German style family owned tavern where Kevin had sausage, I had schnitzel, and also the really delicious beef broth with sliced savory pancakes, which are cut into ribbon sized noodles called fritten soup. Homestyle cooking for sure and very reasonably priced. We also found a really cool restaurant that had a nice garden in the back. We could sit quietly in the shade and enjoy some wonderful food. It was really crowded, so you could tell that it was a local establishment and very, very popular. I'm celebrating another video out. This was a tough one on Auschwitz, so it was very intense. We're done, we're thrilled. And now we're at a traditional uh, Vienna restaurant. I got the, uh, I forget what it's called. Lumberjack, Lumberjack. steak. Yeah, what's name? Lumberjack. It's a fries. A very thin pounded steak. 
It's delicious. It's very tasty. Got some sauces. And there's bacon on there. So there's let's not, let's take a moment of joy for that. Um, Mustard and a little salad. Looks great. I'm enjoying it. And because we were in a place for a month, we like to save a little money when we can. Luckily, there was a lot of grocery stores around. The Bila grocery stores were just everywhere. And we found we could buy some nice simple foods like wraps for lunch and not have to go out all the time. We also bought plenty of sausage as well. <laughs> but it wasn't cooked quite as well by ourselves as when we went out and got it. You need to plan ahead though, because grocery stores are closed on Sundays. That's true. <laughs> we learn the hard way. We always learn the hard way. We tend to always learn the hard way, yes. <laughs> Let's talk about our costs and prices that we paid for in Vienna. Now, our Airbnb was $1,411.70 for 30 days. Bear in mind, we were in Amsterdam for three of those days, but we still kept our Airbnb during that entire time. Because it was only $47.06 per night. Not bad at all. Our train ride from Krakow to Vienna was €162.40 for both of us. The concert we went to was €150 for both of us. It included a free Mozart CD, but we didn't take it. Travelers can't do that. The Albertina Museum was 37.80 euros for both of us. The alleyways, courtyards, and hidden sites tour we took with Airbnb experiences was 29 US dollars a piece. Our Vienna Complete Bike Tour with e-bikes was 90 euros for both of us. Cappuccinos at Cafe Museum were 6 euro 90 a piece. Eggs Benedict were 13.50 a piece for each of us. Their schnitzel and sides were 29 euro 50, and the Wurstel sausage was 12.50 euro and their Hugos were nine euro piece. When you're in the mood for burgers and fries, Sultan's has some for 12 euro 90, and Hugo's for surprisingly affordable five euros a piece. Contrast that Hugo to our visit to Cafe Soccer, a Hugo there was 11 euro 50, cappuccino was six euro 90. We scored on the cost of the soccer tart though because our waiter forgot to bring it to us, so that was free. Normally it would be 20 euro with a hot beverage and mineral water. Our Kaiser Charm, at the street festival was 8 euro 90. Spetzla was 11 euro 90 with bacon and herb butter. Our cousin Connor sausage was 7 euro 90. Cafe Central's pastries were 6 euro 20 a piece and their cappuccinos were 6 euro a piece. Coffee and Friends, our favorite spot, charges only 3 euro 80 for their small cappuccinos and 4 euro 80 for the large ones, which I had. Their American pancakes with fruit were 8 euro 30 a piece. At Gasthaus Zoom Hollernstrock, we paid three euro ninety for the Furtaten soup, fourteen eighty euro for my schnitzel, and my sausage and salad was eleven euro eighty, and the Melange coffee was seven euro sixty for two. A bonus tip: if you're full-time travelers, Vienna is a great place to travel to because you can actually receive packages here. They have package drop-off spots, and their post office accepts packages. So very convenient. Sometimes it's a little bit easier than having something delivered to your Airbnb where you then have to stick around and wait for it to be delivered. And it can be very messy, but they had these pickup spots everywhere and that was super convenient. So what did we think about Vienna? You know, it was a little bit confusing for me. Um, there were parts that just didn't click and I think it was because we were not in the city center. Yeah. But especially as we were preparing for this episode, it's like, man, we did a lot of cool things, but I feel like it never felt rushed. So I'm more excited about uh, Vienna after kind of absorbing all of the cool things we did. Yeah, I think it's like that Billy Joel song, Vienna Waits For You. It basically is a city that lets you do what you want to do at your pace. It's not a rush city. It doesn't right. feel like anyone's pushing you to do anything. You want to sit at a restaurant, drink your coffee, sit at a restaurant, drink your coffee. You want to have a meal, that's fine. No one's going to rush you around feeling the, the feeling of walking through the city and just looking at architecture was calming and and just easy the parks were easy everything felt like it was so easy that i almost forgot how wonderful the city was i almost feel as though vienna is proud enough of its culture and everything that it has to offer that it doesn't have to um beg you to love it. Yeah. I think it's just standing there waiting for you to fall at its knees, which is kind of a different vibe than some of the other places we've been to, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, it didn't feel touristy either. You know, where a lot of places feel like you're being pushed in tourist centers and, and to buy something. I mean, there was also some of that, but it felt like a lot of locals were doing the same things that we were doing 
And so I never felt like I was in a tourist trap part of town. I, I do think that if you're in Stevens Plots, you have to be mindful you're not going to get the best food. I would say that that's maybe a touristy place for restaurants. True. Very true. The rule is if you see a long line in front of a place, it's probably a tourist spot. The locals aren't going to stand in line to go visit a place. Not like those, at least. Yeah. If you haven't been to Vienna already, is it on your bucket list? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. Again, we mentioned that we're going to be bringing you a cool new episode from Amsterdam next week. And check out findjamery.com. Great stuff there, including our membership section, which we'd love you to check out. Until next time. Until next time.